So I just got home from work and I just fed sweets, you know, our bottle cap, our afternoon bottle. And I got my sisters coming over to put their horses to help move these cows off the river. It's really windy today. I think it was really windy when we moved them down there, ironically. I'm gonna go feed our cows here in the slough, get them back away from the gate, and then go down with the, the tractor and the bale and see if I can't kind of lead the cows up from the river with my sisters on their horses behind to try to keep them together. So I'm sure once they get out of that pasture, they're just gonna wanna start eating all the green grass that's growing. So hopefully that they can keep them contained enough to get them up here to the slough area. So I got the cows fed. I got them all over on that end of the pasture. I'll also grab a silage bale. And once everybody gets here, we'll head down the river and see how this goes. I'm hoping to have this gate open coming to this pasture when we come back so we just drive right in here with them. After we got these new cows moved up from the river, we had to run down to Randall and finish drilling this field before the rainstorm hit because it was coming pretty quick. And we wanted to get those drills out of here and get them cleaned up before this rainstorm hit. So we were running pretty fast after we got these cows moved. So I'm heading up to that range fence a little bit later in the day than what I was hoping for. I spent this morning cleaning up this fence that we tore out along our driveway. So I still had a bunch of barbed wire I needed to roll up. So I rolled up some barbed wire, tried kind of filling in some of the holes where we pulled the posts out of. And I pulled up some of these tires and reset them around our risers, our irrigation risers. Some of them were halfway buried in the dirt. So I just cleaned those up, made them look a little bit nicer. We're gonna head up the road and head up Tin Cup do some more fencing that's kind of the name of the game right now just fence 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 it's we're gonna go out on the range here a little less than a month so i want to get all this fencing done well i got up here on the fence and started working in one of these spring snow hail storms i don't know what you want to call it Kind of a slush almost caught me. So <laughs> we're just trying to shelter as best as we can under this hawthorn bush or whatever this is, this willow bush, I don't know. There's, a bit of, there's been a little bit of lightning too, so the dog's all freaked out. Pipe is over here shivering. She doesn't like the lightning. So hopefully it passes over us pretty quick. It's not too warm out here. I should have known to brought a brought a hoodie. Well, 
this kind of sucked. It's starting to it's starting to break up now. I'm starting to see a little bit lighter skies here to the west of me. Problem was I was about a half mile away from my side by side. So I would have had to walk all the way back to the side by side in the middle of that rainstorm. So I just thought it'd be better just to try to take a little bit of shelter in this bush here. I know you're not really supposed to shelter under trees or bushes, but I don't know. It didn't seem like too bad of an idea with the rain and whatnot. And luckily this bush isn't very tall. I got I kinda I walked down off the hill a little way, so I wasn't on top of the hill at least, so I tried to make it as safe as possible. But like I said, I think it's gonna hopefully clear up here in a minute. A little bit chilly now, <laughs> but I'll just keep working, get warm back up. Dogs aren't very happy. Hi, Issa. Not too happy. Lots of fun. Well, so dogs and I got through that rainstorm and finished that section of fence. Now we've moved over to the, the next section that I'm working on. I'll grab this map and I'll show you kind of what we're looking at. So I don't know how well the camera picks this up, but this is our cattle associations area. So this is the Jackknife Cattle Association that we're part of. And so this is the fence that I was working on right here where this blue line is. So it starts right here in this corner. It goes all, goes all the way along the, there's a, a highway that runs along here. So it goes right along this highway. And then it ends here at a piece of private property. So that was the section that I was working on. I think it's about a mile and a half or so. And the section I moved to now is this section right here, this orangish yellow line. So on the map, where you are right here in this corner where it butts up to private. So you look behind us. I don't know how the camera picks it up, but this fence right here tees right into private right up there and then goes up all the way up this way and just keeps going. So I focus on this section here first along the highway just because, you know, if the cows get out here, they can get on the highway pretty easy. So I figured this was the best section to start with just to get that shirt up. And now starting with this one, this is actually a letdown fence. So I don't know if anybody's familiar with letdown fences or if you have them in your areas, but they're, they're you see them on occasion up here where we live just because of the amount of snow we get. And as I walk this fence, I'll kind of explain it more on how they work. But before that, I'll kind of explain this a little bit more here on the map. So if anybody's curious on how this cattle association works, I actually did a video on this last summer when I was up here fixing fence. And I'll put a link to that video at the, at the end of this video and you guys can click on it and learn more about how this how this works and kind of, kind of the ins and outs of it. So talking about this <clears throat> letdown fence, you can see all the wires are on the ground and we use these clips. So this is just a three wire barbed wire fence. And you can see there's nails, there's these clips and they have these I think they are concrete form nails is what I'd call them. These double headed nails. And these clips have holes in them. And all what you do, just so this is our this is our top wire. So we'll cut, walk along, put the wire in the clip, drop your nail in. Oh, so that's actually our bottom wire, so I'll, I'll need to fix that. But anyway, you'll get you get the gist of how this works. So I walk through and put all these clips, put all these nails in the clips and pull, you get all this wire up off the ground and replace the clips that are broken and of course splice wires and tighten things where they need to be tightened at. And as I was saying, the idea of these fences is just it helps save your wire. Just because the amount of snow we get, if your wire stays up off the ground and when that snow melts in the spring, it gets that crust layer on top of it, you know, that melting and the thawing and the freezing. And as it settles, it just grabs hold of your wires and you know drags them down until eventually they break or stretch out. And with this letdown fence, that kind of helps with that problem because the wires already on the ground isn't going to be break, broken as much or in quite so many places. So that's kind of the idea behind this. I don't know exactly how long this fence is. I guess when I get to the end of it, I got a that Onyx app and I can plot my course and get an exact length uh, distance and I'll let you know then but I probably won't film much of this because it's pretty pretty mundane you know, just walking along putting clips in stretching wire repairing things I did kind of want to show you guys this let down fence because I, I feel like it's probably probably fairly unique to these areas that get a lot, a lot of snow like we do
So this is how it looks when it's all put up. Just pretty simple idea. Pretty tedious job though. It'll take me some time to put this all up. So I've gone about a half a mile on this letdown fence. Like I said, I still got plenty, plenty more to go. I'm gonna call it a day on this fence. I'm gonna get back home and go feed cows and check on everything down there. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. If I don't have to work for Old Dominion driving truck, I'll probably be back out up here in the morning. We're back up here working on this range fence this morning. Looks like today's gonna be a lot nicer day than what yesterday was. Beautiful morning, all the clouds and stuff back there behind us. So we're just gonna keep going on this letdown fence and see how far we can get today. I can't work on it too long because uh, I got back this afternoon and feed cows, of course, and Ellis has his first uh, t-ball game this afternoon at about 5.30, so I wanna be home for that for sure. So I did a quick calculation. This fence is almost exactly three miles long. And on average, these posts are sp spaced 20 feet apart. So that means there's about 800 posts in this fence line. And each one of these posts has three of these clips in it. So that means I've got, I've done 2,400 of these clips, putting the nails in and putting the wire back up in there. Getting up into the higher elevation and starting to run into a little bit of snow. Got a few patches here and there. Well, there it is guys. That's the end of this letdown fence. The fence just ends there. Kind of turned into a pretty thick, like brush thicket patch here. You got a lot of down trees and just like I said, real thick brush where this fence ends. It's pretty windy up here today. up here again on the range fence spend another day up here so after a day i'll have spent almost 40 hours up here just on this one section of letdown fence wasn't in too bad a shape down there towards the, the beginning but as you kept coming up here higher and higher it kept, kept getting worse and worse and been having to splice a lot of wires and stretch a lot of wires replacing a bunch of posts so this is kind of what i've been working on a lot lately it's just these are broken sections here so there's been a lot of them so when you have to splice a bunch of wire, it just so it kind of sucks up a lot of time. But we'll keep chugging away today. I tried to get up here a bit earlier this morning. It's a bit chilly. It was, almost, it was around freezing when I left the house, and the chicken's water had some ice in it. But it feels like it's warming up quite a bit already. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get done today. I guess we'll see though. At least with this section of letdown fence, then we'll move on over to the reseed area and start working on it. Hopefully next week. And luckily today it doesn't seem like it's going to be near as windy as what it was yesterday. So after doing miles and miles of this letdown fence, I guess you're probably wondering what my opinion is on it. And my opinion on it is it, it works great until it doesn't. And so what I mean by that, so like you can see here, this section here, so I, I put this all back up so it's in in you know in the nails in the in these holders here but you can see a bunch of these wires are broke so then what happens when you put the wire up is you've got these i don't know how well the camera's picking it up but you can see how loose and like u shaped the wire is in between each post how it kind of you don't you just don't have any tension in it and you can't really tighten it before you put it up because it's all just a tangled up mess on the ground so you start tightening one wire then you're pulling the other wire was with you and it's just trying to drag through the sagebrush and it just doesn't work. So you pretty much have to put it back up in these wire holders first and go through and see where all your broken wires are and then come back and tighten it where your brakes are and then whenever else you find a loose spot. But what happens is when these wires break on the ground, like a lot of these have been doing, 
So even though this fence was let down on the ground, a bunch of these wires are still broken. Is when you come back through here and try to start tighten this all back up, you can't hardly pull more than, I don't know, five, six posts before you get hung up in the clips here. You start pulling, then your barb will get hung up on a clip or on the bottom of the clip or on the nail. So then you gotta walk all the way down, you know, jerk that wire around to try to get it to go through the clip. Then you just have to do that, you know, three or four times on each break to get that wire to tighten up at least some ways down. Then on a section like this where I've got, so I've got one, two breaks there. I think I've told you guys this before, like when I go through a fence line, I'll staple everything up, or in this case, I'll put it, everything up in the clips and I'll mark where my brakes are or where I need to put a new post or where I need to come back and splice a broken wire. So I doubt the camera will pick this up, but so just counting the amount of breaks just in this section here. So if you just look just right down here on that next little hill here, kind of, if you're looking down in the valley, so I wouldn't say more than three, 400 yards. And this is just what I can see from here. I can see all my flags on the fence line. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got at least ten breaks just in this little section here that I need to splice back together. Now as I was saying, to try to get this wire tight, it, you just can't do it without walking up and down the, the fence line three or four times trying to get these, this wire to pull through these clips. So if, if the wire wasn't broke and it was tight to begin with, like through the winter, like and I could just come back and put the wire in the clips and not have to worry about splicing nothing, this would work great. But once this wire breaks and uh, it's on the ground and everything gets loose, it's a pain in the butt to get it put back together. I almost don't know if it's worth, I, don't, I almost don't know if it's any better than just doing normal fence with staples. Because at least with the stapled fence, when a wire breaks, it's, it's contained to that one area. Like usually it won't pull slack out of the whole fence line, you know, but with these clips the way they are, how loose they are, and the snow weighing on the wire when it breaks and melts and whatnot, it just pulls a lot of slack into the fence line and it's hard to get it tightened back up. So yeah, that's my opinion on this letdown fence so far. It's, it works great until it doesn't. It works great until you start getting wires breaking on the ground over winter, because then it's just a mess trying to get it all put back together. So I just got this brace together for now. I'll come back and replace this one later this summer after I've gone through all the, the fence up here on the association allotment. I just, I don't have time to replace braces as I'm putting this fence up just before the cows come out here. So I'm just putting things together and taking notes on places I need to come back to and do a little bit more work on. Like here, I've got my, <clears throat> my notes going. So I got a, a brace I need to replace on the road, that road fence we started on. And this is the engine block gate. Like I was saying, I don't have the time this spring to replace all these braces as I get to them before the cows come out in, into these sections. So I'm just going through and getting this fence stood up and making it tight enough that the cows won't push through it. And when I get more time and the cows get out here, I'll come and replace some of these braces. Well, we finally got this letdown fence done. It took me nine hours today to finish it up, but we're done with this one. Then we'll move on over to that reseed area over on the jackknife side and start working on it. Because we're getting down to you know, kind of crunch time with this fence. So we've got three weeks from yesterday till the cows come out and 
I just know how quick time goes once you get busy doing things that I need to keep going on this. So I guess hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Have a good day.